as you follow along with this tutorial about how to make drum beats in Studio One, the same principles apply regardless of which plugin you're using. For example, you could be using this plugin, Superior Drummer 3, or the very popular Addictive Drums 2. But to make it much easier for you to follow along, I'll be using a plugin that we all have, and that's Impact XT. It comes with Studio One. Now, the particular kit I'll be using is this one, TM pop rock kit now if you don't see that available that means you probably need to download the kits for impact xt to do that go up to the top of studio one where it says studio one click on that then go down to studio one installation click on that that opens up this window what you want to do is go down and open the instruments folder then open the impact drum kits folder and you'll see the impact xt's kits and sounds there make sure that you have that downloaded and installed and then you'll be able to follow along exactly with what I'm doing in this tutorial. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. There's actually many ways to create drum beats in Studio One, but I'm going to show you my methodology, which I've developed over many years. It's really quite simple and straightforward, and I think you're going to find it easy to follow along. Let's get started by inserting our plugin. So here we are in a completely blank project. I'm going to go to the Browse button at the bottom right hand corner to open up my Browse panel. I'm just going to make sure I've got the Instruments tab selected at the top here and also have my instruments sorted by vendor. So if you want to follow along, perhaps you'll do the same thing there. Then I'm going to go down to the Presonus folder here, just open that one, and then I can see the Impact instrument there. So I'll just drag it out into the middle area there and it's inserted into our project. And if you like, you could go ahead up here and rename that to drums which I will do now now there's no instruments loaded into this yet so we need to do that in impact so we'll go to the top menu here where it says default we'll select that and I'm going to go down to our instrument which is TM pop rock kit I click on that that's loaded up just click anywhere just to get rid of that menu there okay so if you click on some of these pads you're probably quite quietly hear some sound now if you've already got your midi keyboard hooked up then of course you can play this instrument from there and that's what i'll be doing during this tutorial so i can play some notes on my midi keyboard and i can hear some sound now if you don't happen to have a midi keyboard yet what i would try doing is pressing the caps lock key on your computer keyboard and that should bring up this interface this enables you to use your computer keyboard as a keyboard to trigger these sounds make sure that you have the octave set correctly to play notes in impact so i would have it on octave c1 here and i can play those notes from my computer keyboard now if that doesn't happen to pop up when you press the caps lock key what you'll need to do is go up to studio one up the top here go down to options click there make sure you're on the external devices tab in this window okay and then if you don't see this qwerty keyboard you won't be seeing that if it hasn't worked for you i'll just remove mine and i'll show you how to add it if it's not there just click on the add button down here Go down to Presonus here, open that folder, then go down, click on QWERTY keyboard, and then click on OK. And that should be available to you now when you press the caps lock key on your keyboard. So I'll click on OK, press caps lock, and you can see that's come up for me. So hopefully now we should all be able to hear some sounds when we press keys on our various devices. Before we record our first drums, I just want you to make sure that your record settings in Studio One are set up the same as mine so that you get the same results. So go down to the bottom of Studio One and just click on this little cog icon that you can see here. That'll open up the record panel. And I don't want to go into detail about all the settings here. That's outside of the scope of this tutorial. I just want you to make sure you have the same settings as me. In other words, all of these options are switched off. They're all gray, but this one is switched on. Record, mix, okay? Just make sure that's switched on. All of these other options are switched off and then you can close this panel. The next thing we're gonna do is set the tempo for the song. Now you may already know the tempo for the song. Say for example, you want it to be 110 beats per minute. If you go down to the bottom where it says tempo, just click on the value there and then type in what you want it to be. So I'll type in 110 and then press enter on my keyboard and that sets the tempo for the project. Now if you don't happen to know the exact value and you wanna calculate that, 
It's very easy. Just move your mouse down to the word tempo at the bottom of here, and then just start to click in time with the tempo as you want it to be. I'll do that now. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I like to do that until it kind of settles on a number. I'm going to be happy with 90 there, I think. So therefore, my tempo is now set for my project. And finally, the last little bit of setup that I want to do is go down to the metronome area here and just turn the metronome on. I'm just going to click on that now and that icon turns blue. So we're going to be able to hear our metronome. Let's test that by pressing space on the keyboard to play the project. Now I found over the years that I get the best results if I actually record my drum kit in sections rather than try to play all of the drums at the same time. So I'm actually going to start off here by just recording my hi-hats. Now I'm going to be using two hi-hat sounds from this drum kit. The first one is on the G sharp one key and sounds like this. That's a closed hi-hat. And the second one is on the A sharp one key and it's an open hi-hat sound. Sounds like this. And of course we can close it with the closed hi-hat key so it sounds like this i like that sound so i'm going to be using that in my track now i don't like to start recording right from the beginning of the project at bar one i like to leave a little bit of space at the beginning of my projects so i'm going to move the playhead to the beginning of bar two however before i do that i just want to make sure i have got snapped switched on i can toggle that at the top of studio one here by clicking on this icon here or i can toggle it with the letter n on my keyboard now, when I've got snap switched on, I'll go ahead and click on the second, the beginning of the second bar on my ruler at the top here. That just makes sure I'm exactly in the right spot. Now, in a moment when I start recording, I'm not actually going to start playing right away. I'm going to wait till I get to the beginning of the third bar. Okay, I'm just going to allow myself another bar of count in there. Before I do start recording, I just want to make sure that this track is enabled. So I'm just looking at the track here, and I'm just making sure that that red uh, record button is on there. So I'm ready to go there. Now there's a couple of ways you can start recording in Studio One. You can either go down to the bottom and press on the record button here, or as I like to do, you can press the star or asterisk key on your numpad on your keyboard. So let's go ahead and record our hi-hats. Okay, I did one extra note that I didn't mean to do there. That's okay. We'll go in and edit that in a moment. But as you can see, the, re the recording has happened there. If I go to the beginning of that bar, I'm going to press space on my keyboard to play. We can hear what I played there. Now, my timing wasn't all that good there. So the next thing we're going to do is tidy up that recording. Now, I don't really need the Impact XT interface to be open here at the moment, so I'll go ahead and I'll close that. And I'm going to start editing the drums here by double-clicking on this clip here. So I'll double-click there. That opens up this edit panel. Now, Studio One is really quite clever in that it usually knows when you're recording drums and it brings up the appropriate interface. But just in case your interface looks a little bit more like this, you're perhaps using a different plugin or something, and you've got a piano keyboard here and notes being shown here of different lengths then just go ahead and click on the drum icon on this interface here and that will give you the drum view it's much easier to edit drums using this kind of view now we can see here that we've got our different drums and they're being played a lot of them just a little bit off of this grid line that we can see here so we want to correct the timing and have them exactly on time now what i can do is go ahead and drag a box around all of these so i'll just start up at the corner here left click and drag a box around them and that selects all of those drums and i can do something called quantizing them to correct the timing so quantizing is a way of correcting the timing of a performance after the actual performance now i can press q on my keyboard to do that and you can see in this case They've adjusted their timing slightly, and they now sound like this. So that timing is perfect, but you may have gotten a different result. Now, I'll undo what I did there by pressing Control-Z on the keyboard. 
if you've got a different result or an unexpected result for your piece of music, it's probably because your quantize setting is incorrect. We can see on the display here that we've got a number of horizontal grid lines. What these represent is the current setting that we have in the quantize drop down here. At the moment, it's on 16 divisions per bar, okay? Now, what's going to happen is when we press that Q button, the program is going to look at each of these notes and it's going to move it to the nearest horizontal line here, the nearest grid line, if you like. So if this setting is incorrect, then it'll probably move to the wrong place. So let's say, for example, I change this setting to two divisions per bar okay i'll do that now you can see there's a lot less grid lines and some of these are nowhere near any of these lines so when i press q on my keyboard my beat is completely messed up and it now sounds like this not what i was wanting at all so i'll press ctrl z on my keyboard to undo that and i'll change it to the correct setting now this is not a complete tutorial on quantizing but so what i'd recommend at the moment is you just experiment with this until you get a result that you want so i'm going to press q on the keyboard there and quantize my hi-hat and now i'm ready to go ahead and actually record my kick and snare so if we open up Impact XT again and I play the kick and the snare, you can see they're being triggered by the B0 and D1 keys on my keyboard, okay? Again, I'm just going to make sure that I'm starting from the second bar to give myself a little bit of a count in, and then I'm just going to make sure we're record enabled, which we are, and I'll just start recording. Okay, so we've recorded those drums, and again, I want to clean up that performance a little bit there. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag this box around those notes, and I'm going to press Q on my keyboard just to quantize those. And then I'm just going to go ahead and quickly tidy up um, this final hi-hat note, which was here. Remember earlier I said it was not needed? I forgot to delete it earlier, so I'm just going to double-click on it just to get rid of it, okay? So now we can see all of our basic drums there. Let's go to the beginning of the performance at bar three and have a listen. Okay, let's go ahead and just refine this a little further. Because I'm not recording anything at the moment, I'm just gonna go ahead and trim this clip. So I'll just grab the end of the clip there and just drag it in. I've got snap switched on. Again, I'll just take the end of it here and drag that in. We've just got our two bar clip there. I'm also going to go down to this bottom edit panel, panel and I'm just going to grab the top of it and I'm just going to drag it up a bit so that we've got a bit more room here and we can see what we're doing. And the other thing I want to do is go down to the bottom, just in this bottom half, and I'm just going to drag this panel up because we're going to be looking a little bit of velocities here, okay? So velocity is how hard the key was pressed at the time. It doesn't necessarily equate to more volume. It usually does, uh, but it definitely can often change the sound of the drum. For example, we can hear it with the snare drum sound that we were playing. But it's not only quieter when we play it quieter, but when we play it louder, there's a bit more of a ring to it, yeah? So those are the kind of details that we may be looking out for. Now, I just want to make sure I can only hear the drums at the moment. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the metronome off. So I'll go to the bottom here, just click there. And I'm just going to have a listen to this performance. Okay, overall, I'm fairly happy with it, but there's a couple of um, velocities that I'd like to change. One of the things that you can do is click on one of the drums. So I'm going to adjust the velocities of the kick here. I'll just click on its name here on the left-hand side. And then when we look in the velocity area at the bottom, it's only showing the velocities for that drum, yeah? So I actually think that this one was a little bit high. So I'm just going to grab the top, drag it down. You can hear it as you drag up and down. I want this one to be a little bit more prominent. Yeah, and this very first one to be very prominent. I'm not sure that I want this last one to be as loud as it is. Let's have a listen. Yeah, it's okay. Maybe just down a little bit. Finally, I just want to take a look at those hi-hats. 
that we recorded initially. So I'll click on the hi-hat. You can see the different velocities here. I feel like some of them are just a little loud. This one here was striking me as a little loud. And this one here. Remember, some of them are open as well. I think the open one was okay. Let's just find that. Yeah, that's that one there. I think that maybe could come down just a little bit. Okay, so these are the kind of refinements that it's worth focusing on a little bit so you get a nice feel for the performance. Let's have a listen again. Okay, that's fine so far, but it's not long enough for a song and there's not much variation in it. Let's deal with that next. So how much variation and what kinds of variation you have in your drum beats is an artistic choice entirely up to you. But I'm just going to go ahead and show you how I may go about creating some variations when we've got a simple start like the beat that we've created so far. Now the beat that we've got so far is just two bars long, okay? So if I create some variations within this and then duplicate this clip, there's probably going to be too many variations. So I'm going to start off by making this twice as long, okay? So it's going to be four bars long. So I'll select my clip and then I'll press D on the keyboard. That's going to duplicate it. So I've got one after the other. So it's now twice as long. And I, at this point, will probably join these together because I'm going to be copying and pasting them later as one piece. So I'm going to select the first clip here and then I'm going to hold down shift on the keyboard, select the second clip and then press G on my keyboard, which is for merge events. OK, so that's now one whole piece, which is four bars long. Now I'm going to start off with a crash symbol right at the beginning to create an accent right at the beginning of the piece. So I'm scrolling my edit view right to the beginning and I'm just going to add one in manually rather than actually record it. I can see that there's a crash symbol here. Yeah, that's on the C sharp two key there. And I'm just going to go across to the grid here and double click right at the beginning there. And that adds in a crash symbol. And I can go ahead and adjust the velocity for it as I want. Now, one thing I don't like here is that the crash is playing at the same time as the hi-hat. And that commonly doesn't actually happen. It could happen, but I don't tend to like that. So I'm just going to get rid of that hi-hat by double clicking on it there. Yeah, so we've just now got the kick and the crash happening at the same time. Let's just have a listen to see how that works as an accent at the beginning of our piece. Okay, and you can hear there that it's great right at the beginning. You, want it, you wouldn't want it to be repeating too often. You could have it at different spots within this clip, depending on the piece of music, what the rest of the music is doing. But it's just fine here right at the beginning of this section. That would commonly or typically be at the beginning of a verse or the beginning of a chorus or something along those lines. The next thing I'm going to do is add in a little fill at the end of this section, and this is going to repeat then into you know the next part. So what I'm going to do is go to bar five here, and this fill is just going to be using toms, okay? Now the toms I'm using are on the D, B, and A keys. OK, I'm just going to do a really fill, which I'll really simple fill, which I'll play just at the end of this section here during bar six. So I'll hit record and go ahead and play that. OK, that sounded fine to me. Now, I don't always quantize uh, things like this. It's nice to have something which is a little bit natural feeling in there. Yeah. OK, so if we have a listen to this. Okay, it is a little bit loose, so let's go ahead and quantize it. But sometimes I may just manually adjust these so that they're a little closer to the bar lines. But we'll go ahead and quantize it. I've got the whole clip selected this time. I'm just going to press Q on the keyboard to quantize everything that we've got. Be careful with this method, though, because you may be quantizing things that you don't want to be quantized within this clip. But it should be fine just for this example. Now, that fill is sort of going to sound right when it leads into another section. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. So I've got my clip selected. I'm going to press D on the keyboard, and that duplicates it, as you can see there. So let's just have a listen and see how that works.
okay so you can feel that that feels quite natural and it leads in especially because we've got that crash happening again at the beginning of that section okay so it really feels like we're going into a new section of the song now finally the kind of thing that i may do is just the odds and ends that you're going to find in different parts of the song i would go to specific parts of the song and play variations but i would also often do an intro so let's do an intro now again i'm just going to use those three toms a fairly simple intro i'll move my playhead right back to the beginning to bar one so i give myself a nice little lead in and i'm just going to make sure i've got the metronome switched on again because we don't have any drums there so we won't know where to play and let's go ahead and record a little fill there And that is fairly simple, nothing very exciting there, but it kind of works sometimes, the simple thing like that. So again, I'll just go ahead, select that clip and quantize it, and let's have a listen to see what we've got so far. I'll just turn off the metronome, and here we go. Now, obviously, the variations which you create depend on your song they're going to happen where you want them to in your song but it's really as simple as that if you can create um, larger sections without duplicating then you tend to get more natural results however for certain genres of music typically things like hip-hop electronic music there's really no need to do that because that type of music is not really wanting that kind of variation that's entirely up to you but that's how i would generally go about creating those variations you know there's many features and functions in studio one which are easily overlooked and when you find out about them you realize they make your life so much easier i've put together five secrets about studio one that i think you should know just click on the thumbnail right here Thank you so much for watching.